The Red Hawk offensive and defensive plan works to perfection as Miami defeats Austin P 31-10 Saturday. This week, it's the annual battle for the victory bell, an 8 o'clock kick against the Bearcats. We'll talk to head coach Chuck Martin about both games next on Red Hawk Football Weekly. This is Red Hawk Football Weekly. Brought to you by G&J Pepsi-Cola of Hamilton. Refreshing southwestern Ohio since 1939. By Koenig Equipment. Found online at KoenigEquipment.com. By Marathon. Fueling the American spirit. By Bud Light. Reminding you to enjoy responsibly among friends. Steve Baker talked with Miami head football coach Chuck Martin after this on Red Hawk Football Weekly. It's true, fans are craving Dr. Pepper more than ever. So I've assembled a team. They're not exactly five stars, but they've got spirit. We'll be at tailgate, the cheap seats, love seats. If you're craving Dr. Pepper, we'll be there. We'll be everywhere. That's me up there. And yes, we are taking walk-ons. I'm in. Doug Flutie? Flutie's in! Let's go, Dr. Pepper, help! Here's a boys medium. That'll work. Ever wonder what's in a beer? If it's a Bud Light, it's four essential ingredients. Barley, rice, water, and hops. Here's to the beer you can always count on. Brewed to be America's favorite light lager. Welcome in again to Red Hawk Football Weekly. The Red Hawks took on Austin P on Saturday and came away with a 31-10 victory over the Governors. This week, they will take on the University of Cincinnati Bearcats, the renewal of the Battle for the Bell, the victory bell on the line Saturday night at 8 o'clock at Yeager Stadium. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks, joined by head coach Chuck Martin. And coach, uh, pretty much to the plan, I know you wanted to run the football, be a little conservative against Austin P, and really a, a three-touchdown victory that was always in the game plan. Yeah, no, we're, we're excited about how we bounced back from Marshall like we talked about earlier. We came off a very tough, physical, grinding opening day loss, which we were very frustrated in the outcome. Interesting to see how this group would respond. I thought they would respond well, but you never know. Um, they had a great week of practice. We came out smoking. Uh, you know, we scored three of our first four possessions. We push out to 21-7 lead, have an opportunity even to push it a little further before the half. So our first half was fantastic. We dominated yardage, time of possession, big play, specialties. Pretty much the first half we had our way. Uh, second half, like we said earlier, defense played fantastic. They got better and better as the game went on. They got more used to all the motions and shifts and unbalance. It was, as they saw it, it actually was getting easier for them, uh, that if everybody just went where they were supposed to, we were going to be fine, and they're an athletic group on Austin Peay's offense. Uh, offensively, didn't move it as much as we'd like in the third quarter, really got bogged down, but then had a very solid fourth quarter. Defense, as you said, got better and better. It forced a couple of turnovers and, and, and overall really took care of Austin Peay's offense. They had to throw the ball more, got them out of their comfort zone. Yeah, no, and they showed early in that, you know, the second drive of the game, they showed what they were capable of. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We weren't, we weren't on our business, and they went three plays and scored in a hurry, and uh, then all of a sudden our defense kind of settled in, and from that point on, uh, they, they played fantastic the whole game. First half was a good one. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first half of the game against Austin P. as the Red Hawks uh, very, in the first couple of possessions, uh, didn't get things going. Actually, the first possession didn't get things going. Then you go to the air. Sam Martin gets a big first down on third down. Yeah, we could run or throw pretty much in the first half. We mixed it up. We ran the ball really effectively. We threw the ball effectively. Here's a nice strike to Sam to keep a drive alive. We, again, two weeks in a row, we are very good on third and fourth down, which is obviously key to our success. And on fourth down and one here, you go to Alonzo Smith over right guard and uh, plows through, and that's a, that's a pretty good hole off that right side for Zoe to pick up the first down. Yeah, and again, just like we said, very efficient on third and fourth down, which has been a key to our success the first two weeks. Another fourth down, this time Gus Raglan. Yeah, again, they're dropping back in coverage, dropping eight, and, and Gus takes advantage of it and takes off scramble and gets us the first down. And here's the touchdown pass, finding Kenny Young out of the backfield. Actually, this is a replay of the, the Raglan run, excuse me, and you see Gus scrambling for the first down, and here's the touchdown pass yeah. to Kenny Young. Yeah, really nice deal. 
put in a little play. We got Kenny to the flat right away. Had two guys going vertical. Their will backer couldn't get to Kenny because we had two guys going vertical, as you'll see right here. And the will gets kind of bumped off there, and we got a nice, easy four-yard pitch and catch. Becker supplying the block there at the end uh, to get Young into the end zone. You talked about this is what uh, they do, and Javon Craig takes it in from 22 to even the score. Yeah, no, really, really nice athletes on, on their side of the ball quarterback and a couple different running backs and again one guy didn't do their job against triple option attack and that's what it looks like 7-7 after that play and the third play of the second quarter there's the first touchdown to James Gardner yeah nice job we'd run the ball got a couple first downs and then uh, went to the air and uh, they try to check on us and we got a one-on-one matchup outside uh, Gus gets in a good position, and James makes a phenomenal play. Great athletic field. play there. And uh, here is another great play uh, to start the next drive. You used all four tailbacks in the game, and that's Maurice Thomas on the jet sweep. Yeah, getting the ball in the front. Good job sealing the edge. Uh, right tackle Tommy Doyle uh, and, and Nate Becker at tight end. Zoe with a nice block up in front. And, and then Mo getting, getting us a nice gain. Another fourth and one on this drive. And again, you go to Alonzo Smith off the right side. Yeah, and again... Short yards has been good to us. We've been finding ways to get first downs on short yards and goal line situations. We've been good in the red zone, good on third down. If we keep that up and if we can start holding on the dang football, we're going to be very potent on offense this year. First and 10 from the 34, and again, Gus finds James Gardner. Again, good job sliding in protection. Good job getting the one-on-one matchup. A couple different times they left him one-on-one outside, and we went to James, and James made him pay. 21-7 21-7 at this point, and to finish out the half, as you'll see it one more time here on the play-action fake, and then Gus with plenty of time there to step up and throw the football to James Gardner, who again wins the battle in the end zone for the score, and we'll take a third look at it here. Great protection by the pocket there. Slid around back, but plenty of time for Gus Raglan to get that throw away. Then the defense takes over. Heath Harding, a couple of big plays on this final drive yeah. for the Governors. Second and three, they got a chance to cut it to one score in second and three, then Heath Heath gets him back in a long yards. Great call by Ski and the defensive staff. We got a corner blitz into the reverse, and Ski. In as usual, Heath's going to make big plays for our defense and big plays for our football team. And here's another one. And again on the uh, toss around, Callahan hit in the backfield by Heath Harding. And then on fourth and five, the Governors go for it and they look for Javon Craig to pick it up. But again, Heath Harding reads it beautifully. Yeah, great, great tackle again by Heath. Two big back to back big time plays. Uh, gets us off the field and actually gave us a chance to extend the lead before the half. And you see it again here as Heath Harding with a nice low tackle. Clean tackle. Javon Craig came up injured on this play, and I've looked at it several times and can't exactly figure out what happened. Just came down on that ankle wrong and uh, did not play the rest of the game. And uh, that may have uh, hurt the uh, governors quite a bit in there as you take a look at the final uh, play there of the half. Yeah, and he just has an ankle sprain. I talked to him. He's, oh, a, really, okay, he's a really nice great. athlete. Had an ankle sprain, was optimistic he'd be back this week, so I had talked to him after the game. But he's a good player. Uh, they had actually rotated both quarterbacks against Cincinnati, so we are familiar with the second guy coming in and uh, ready to go after a very good first half. And he actually did a really good job for the Governors as he came back, and uh, that was Jeremiah Oatsball. Uh, overall, as we talked about, defense did exceptionally well in the half, and the offense uh, really – took care of the football in that first half for the most part. Yeah, no, we did it. We did a nice job in, in all phases, offense, defense, and special teams. Only a five-possession first half. Our defense stopped them on four or five possessions. We scored on three of our five possessions. So uh, we did what we wanted to, played the game the, the right way, ran the ball more north and south. We felt like against Marshall we were probably too much east and west and didn't tack them downhill enough. Probably too, too, too little, little, little flim-flammy against Marshall. We want to be more physical, more downhill. We want to rely on our defense to win games. We want to play it uh, uh, north and south game on offense and protect our quarterback. Yeah, and again, I think three or four times in that first half, you get it on fourth down. And uh, this team is becoming exceptional on third and fourth down at times. Yeah, and it helps that, obviously, when the short yards, you can run the football. Mm-hmm. All right. And then in the pass yardage, Gus is, is, a, is a really nice asset to have because he can complete balls on third and fourth down when you have to throw it. He hit the one to Sam Martin on third down that we saw. But he also can beat you at their feet, and it makes it tough coverage-wise. We, get, we don't get as much drop eight because of Gus's legs. He can read coverages and throw the ball. So it, it's, it's the boys up front in the short yards and having 14 in the longer yards situation really gives us a better chance on on third and fourth down. Very good. We'll come back and talk about the second half when we come back on Red Hawk Football Weekly. Stay with us. You train, it twinges. You twist, it tears. 
for every way you move and every way it hurts. The orthopedics and sports medicine team at Mercy Health provides comprehensive expert care for bones, muscles, tendons, and joints. With more than 60 physicians and specialists and more therapists, athletic trainers, and conveniently located sports medicine facilities than any other system in greater Cincinnati, Mercy Health helps you stay in motion. Call 844-9-GO-PLAY for same day or next business day appointments. The new celebration rules are in place and Pepsi is all for it. So what's big man Joe Staley doing? He's celebrating a touchdown he didn't score. The sad truth is the odds of a guy like Joe scoring a real touchdown are the same as zero. But it's fun to dream, isn't it? Even if those dreams are delusional. Hey, there's no I in impossible, Joe. There is, there's two. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly is brought to you by Courtyard Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. Welcome back in to Red Hawk Football Weekly. We've talked about the first half, and at halftime against Austin P, Miami was leading 21-7 over the Governors. I'm Steve Baker, along with Chuck Martin, once again the head coach of the Miami Red Hawks, and we talked about the uh, you know the defense, uh, the offense that is being great on fourth down. Heath Harding uh, kind of keyed things there late in that half, and you had a lot of guys step up defensively in this ball game. Yeah, no, they, we played. It takes 11 guys when you play a team that's running as much jet sweep option run pass pass options, unbalanced. Everyone was going to have to be involved, and, and tons of different guys in our defense made play throughout the fourth quarters. And like I said in the first segment, like our defense just kept getting shot. The more they saw their 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 jet sweeps and their unbalance and all their different tricky motions, the more they got comfortable with and the more they honed in and, hey, everybody do their job and we're going to be fine today. The defense played very well. They would need to in the third quarter as the Red Hawk offense kind of stumbled a little bit in the third quarter. As we go to the second half highlights of the football game, as you see, Miami is leading 20. 20- one seven and uh, the Red Hawk offense. Uh, this is one of those things. Three turnovers in the ball game. You don't expect to see Zoe turn it over very often. Yeah, no. Zoe's been very dependable with the ball in his hands throughout his career. Obviously, he's had tons of touches, and he doesn't even really get hit here. Um, yeah. Not not very good job with ball security and. Uh, defense got a good start to stop the half. We're looking to get some points. Now we put our defense in a really short field there. And to start the fourth quarter, the Governors are moving, but then Tony Reed makes a big play. Yeah. Great, great play off the defection, deflection. Um, didn't have a good view of it on the field. I got a better view of it here watching on tape. But uh, they're trying to play action. Everybody's on their guys. Tony's in decent position. He's actually beat a little bit, but he gets in there and tries to strip the ball and then somehow, somehow comes away with an incredible interception. Red Hawk offense, uh, defense uh, it wasn't able to move the ball and punted to the Governors. And on their first play, again, the defense gets the ball back. Yeah. Try to do a little trickery. Our defense at this point is really locked in. Great pursuit. Their quarterback, their backup guy's a nice athlete, but we get the ball, we strip it out. Tony actually kind of strips it and and recovers it and, and sets us up in position where we have a chance with 13 minutes to try to put the game away. You see it from the end zone camera here. Any one of three guys could be credited for this uh, forced fumble. DeAndre Montgomery from behind, Heath Harding down low, and again, Tony Reed in there as well, but Tony picks up the uh, ball for the Red Hawks. Yep, and a great, great play by our defense. Uh, you saw incredible pursuit. Everybody chasing the football. Everybody playing hard to the whistle. And here in workmanlike fashion. Again, the Miami offense gets going in the fourth quarter, running the football, and there's Alonzo Smith up the middle for five. Yeah, and again, another key third down there, third and two, getting the first down to see really, really nice hole up on the inside right there. Plenty of room on third and two, get an easy first down, but we want to put the game away here. Defense, it, it held us in in the third quarter and kept our lead and then hit James Gardner on a big play right here for another first yeah, down on third it. and eight. Yeah, third and eight there. James takes a big hit and uh, wouldn't play anymore in the football game, but uh, again, you're going to take shots when you make that crossing pattern and, and a great grab and a, being able to hang on to the ball for James. Yeah, great job, great job taking the hit. Got a little leg whip there, kind of, kind of a dangerous play in hockey. You're getting kicked out if you do that. But yeah. uh, another key third down, again, you talk about our third and fourth down. Third and 11, we, we knew they were dropping out in coverage. We got the ball right up the middle. Uh, got had zone makes one, one back or miss and gets the ball and almost gets the ball in the end zone. And then Leonard Ross, we talked about using all your backs. You bring in Trey Wig and another blocker up front, and he gets into the end zone. 
yeah, nice job. We less than a yard to go, and we just want to push the pile and give it to Leonard, who's a big physical back for us. You got Trey Wick and Ryan Mullen leading the way in the backfield, and we get a nice push and get a really nice easy score there. Makes it 28-10, and then you get the ball right back. A little bit of a surprise for the Governors. Yeah, just again, we, we, we can kickoff team was much better, but we want to have some variances where we kick the ball. We don't, we don't want people to get comfortable that we're always going to kick the ball one way. Really nice execution by our kicker. Got the ball with great height to the 25. Uh, the back guy thought the up guy was going to take it. The up guy thought the back guy was going to take it. And Tony Reed had Johnny on the spot again and makes another play for Miami. Third big play for Tony Reed and then Sam Sloman, who was great on the day, boots one through from 41. Yeah, we actually made him kick it twice since uh, we took a delay a game. Uh, and uh, we kind of lost. We had plenty of time to kick it. We were trying to run the clock down to one. We ran it down to zero and got to delay a game. And Sloman hits it. Then Sloman hits another one right after. So he, he's done a tremendous job kicking the ball. He did indeed. And, and the improvement from week one to week two in special teams, Sam booted it into the end zone several times, a couple of field goals on the day, and, and obviously got the ball back on the, uh, on the pooch kick. Uh, really just a really good job by the kickoff return team this week. Yeah, really nice job by ST all across the yeah. board. And uh, did, a, did a great job. Our kickers and Hunters did great. Our coverage teams are good. So uh, we got to keep improving. We're going to have a bigger challenge with UC's athletes on Saturday. Indeed, UC is the next opponent as they will come calling Saturday night, an 8 o'clock kick at Yeager Stadium in the annual battle for the Victory Bell. We'll come back and talk about the Bearcats more in just a moment. A uh, reminder that we will be on the air at 7 o'clock on uh, Saturday evening as the Red Hawks and the Bearcats will mix it up on the Miami IMG Sports Network. Myself, Terry Bridge, and Randy Hollowell will have have the call for you. We'll come back and talk more about the Red Hawks and the Bearcats and the battle when we return with more Red Hawk Football Weekly in a moment. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly has been brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. Craving Dr. Pepper more than ever. So I've assembled a team. They're not exactly five stars, but they've got spirit. We'll be at tailgate. The cheap seats. Love seats. If you're craving Dr. Pepper, we'll be there. We'll be everywhere. That's me up there. And yes, we are taking walk ons. I'm in. Doug Flutie? Flutie's in. Let's go, Dr. Pepper. Help. Here's a boy's medium. That'll work. Keep twisting, keep stretching, keep bending, and chasing. For total and partial joint replacement to rehabilitation, the orthopedics and sports medicine team at Mercy Health provides comprehensive expert care for bones, muscles, tendons, and joints. With more than 60 physicians and specialists, more therapists, and conveniently located facilities than any other system in greater Cincinnati, Mercy Health helps you stay in motion. Find your specialist at mercymovesyou.com. And we're back, our final segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly. Steve Baker and head coach Chuck Martin here. Miami beating Austin P Saturday, 31-0, getting ready for the Bearcats this Saturday night at 8 o'clock. And, Coach, uh, you always have takeaways from a football game. What do you take away to improve and learn from that Austin P game? Well, I just think we got to play clean football. It was, it was a really, really solid football game for Miami. 
Uh, defense really did a nice job reading their keys and going to where they're supposed to and playing fast and physical the whole game. They were flying around. And then when you do that, when you're on your keys and you're playing fast physical, the turnovers come and they create a bunch of turnovers. Offensively, obviously, we were very pleased with the first half. Went almost perfect to script. We wanted to run the ball and throw the ball over their head, and that's exactly what we did in the first half. Obviously, didn't play as well in the third quarter. Regrouped, had a nice solid fourth quarter. But the, th- the three fumbles, we got to clean up on offense for sure. And then, obviously, a giant step forward on special teams, which we dra- de- desperately needed, but we really played solid on special teams, and that's what we got to continue for, for this Saturday against UC. we gotta be, we got to be good in the kicking game. Hey, 11 years since Miami has beaten the Bearcats, and obviously there's a lot different on the Bearcats this year. New coaching staff, new head coach, new way of doing things. What have you seen in this battle or this UC team that's a little different from what we've seen before? Yeah, not, not a ton. I mean, they got the same collection of athletes. Uh, they're not drastically different defensive schematically. They're 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 a little bit more run oriented, a little less spread. They use the tight end in line a little more, uh, but they play hard. They play fast. They play physical. They had you know they had Michigan on the ropes at Michigan. Michigan had just beaten the dog out of Florida, and then they go into Michigan and they're down. They're they're within a touchdown to take the lead with the ball in the fourth quarter, and they've thrown a pick six. If they had thrown a pick six, they'd be leading in the big house in the fourth quarter. Michigan's one of the top five teams in the country. So they are big, they're fast, they're physical, and obviously they showed last weekend what they're capable of. Obviously, uh, it'll be a big battle. And good news announced uh, on Monday that uh, this re- this rivalry that has been the oldest east of the Alleghenies, or west of the Alleghenies, excuse me, has been renewed till 2029. Yeah, awesome for both schools. Awesome for college football. We don't want rivalries to go away. It's insanely stupid when we start eliminating rivalries. It's one of the main things that makes college football exciting is these rivalry games. We're fortunate enough to have two huge rivals in Cincinnati and OU. Uh, so we're, we're super excited that they've committed to 20 through 2029. Yeah, it's it's always a big game no matter you know who the teams are as far as their personnel or that sort of thing. But it's a bigger game for the seniors and, and for those guys on the team that are from Cincinnati the Cincinnati area, and there's a lot of those guys on both these teams. Yeah, no, we we got a lot of they got a lot of Cincinnati kids. We got a lot of Cincinnati and and, and kids from this area of the state. And then obviously our seniors haven't haven't ever taken home the bell, and they are dying to take home the bell. So huge game for Miami football. Got a chance to get to two and one. Got a chance to keep improving. We could think we got a chance to have a pretty solid team this year. And uh, week one to week two was a really nice improvement. We got to keep improving and keep getting better. Let's talk a little bit about atmosphere because you get to have this game here. It's a Saturday night game at Jaeger Stadium under the lights and uh, with the setting that is now Jaeger Stadium with the APC down there, it should be just an incredible night for college football. Yeah, we appreciate the fan support last Saturday against Austin P was a step in the right direction. Uh, but Cincinnati's going to bring a lot of people to this game. We need all our students, all our fans to come out and support us. We, cer- we really appreciate them doing that. It should be a crazy great night. As I tell all the students at Miami, like, you can still go out afterwards. You know, it's, the night is still young. Yeah. Night is still young at 11 o'clock when the game will end. So it'll be a big night for Miami football. It'll be a great atmosphere. It should be electric. As you look at this football game, obviously you've watched the film. You've seen what Cincinnati has done. They're one and one coming into the game. You're one and one coming into the game. What do you look at on paper that it's going to take to beat the Bearcats on well, Saturday? Matching strengths and strengths. Their defense is is very good uh, in the trenches and linebackers and stopping the run. We like to run the ball right at people. They're really good at stopping the run, so something's going to have to give. We're going to pound the ball north and south at them, uh, just like we did Austin P a week ago. That's our offense. That's when we're most effective uh, in trying to control clock and control the football and running north and south. And, and then defense got a chance. they got electric backs. they got electric as perimeter players. They are running the ball more effectively this year. We have to be able to defend the run and the pass. They were a little more pass-oriented in the previous uh, coaching staff, which are a little more balanced now. And then we got to be on point on special teams because they're electric athletes. And just like Marshall, if we're not, they're going to expose us in a hurry. Coach, best of luck and uh, congratulations on the win Saturday. Good luck against the Bearcats. Thank you. Head Coach Chuck Martin joining us on this week's Red Hawk Football Weekly. Again, the kick is 8 o'clock Saturday night at Jaeger Stadium. The parking lots around Jaeger Stadium will open up five hours prior to that. So get out here, tailgate, have a great time, and then make sure you bring along the radio and tune in at 7 o'clock Myself, Terry Bridge, and Randy Hollowell will have all of the action for you beginning at 7 o'clock with the Knowles of Oxford Tailgate Show. Until then, Steve Baker, thanks for watching. This has been Red Hawk Football Weekly, brought to you by G&J Pepsi-Cola of Hamilton, refreshing southwestern Ohio since 1939, by Koenig Equipment, found online at koenigequipment.com. 
by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. By Bud Light, reminding you to enjoy responsibly among friends. Red Hawk Football Weekly is an exclusive production of the Miami IMG Sports Network. You train, it twinges. You twist, it tears. For every way you move and every way it hurts. The orthopedics and sports medicine team at Mercy Health provides comprehensive expert care for bones, muscles, tendons, and joints. With more than 60 physicians and specialists and more therapists, athletic trainers, and conveniently located sports medicine facilities than any other system in greater Cincinnati, Mercy Health helps you stay in motion. Call 844-9-GO-PLAY for same day or next business day appointments. There's people who care where I'm going And good friends who welcome me home So get up 